to Hangar Talks. I'm your co-host, Jeffter. And I am Shania, also known as the OG Pretty Pink Pilot. Today, we have the pleasure of having two very special guests. We have with us here Captain Doug Taylor Hi. and uh, Miss Angela Benjamin. Yes, hello. So my name is Angela Benjamin, and I lead Delta's Diversity Talent Acquisition Strategy. Um, my role is focused on all of the ways that we can invite more diverse uh, talent into Delta outside of the flight deck. The flight deck is also a part of what we do in terms of the focus area for diversity outreach, um, but we are really trying to broaden our brand and reach to individuals across a range of career pathways that we have at Delta. Uh, my name is Captain Doug Taylor. I'm a Airbus A350 captain based in Detroit, Michigan. I also work in pilot development, which is um, finding ways to do outreach to find pilots and people in interested in aviation and uh, help them find their path into Delta. Thanks for having me. And I am a Delta co-op. Uh, I just started back in May, and it has been amazing. I do things like pilot statements, pilot crew reports, fleet lists for different countries. It's just been a great segue into seeing what the airline industry is like. And I just love how being in the office at Delta, it gives you so much more perspective of, like, what you can see. Like, I didn't notice, like, you guys don't do flight plans, you know? You guys, like, you know, have a team behind you instead of one person doing everything. So, like, if you had to say, like, how it is to go from, like, you know, having to do everything and then now, you know, alleviating some of those responsibilities to other people, how has that transition been? It's been um, pretty nice, actually. So instead of having to do everything myself as a, like, as a CFI or as a, as a private pilot, there's a team of people. So it's like a collection of uh, subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. And so instead of me trying to interpret meteorology, we have meteorology staff mm -hmm. that specialize just in flight weather and, and forecasting and such. And so instead of relying on myself and my interpretation of things, there's people I can talk to on the telephone, the satellite telephone, or through ACARS and, and get answers. So mm -hmm. it's um, it helps me focus on decision making, mm -hmm. um, the tasks that I have as a captain, mm -hmm. and, and planning with a crew as opposed to having to do everything myself. Yes. So part of a team yes and for our listeners a cars is like this box where you can message people um in the flight deck being able to jump seat you see things that you know you're like oh what are all these buttons but they all have a purpose i promise you guys <laughs> <laughs> they do <laughs> but yes in fact um that's actually a very good uh segue into the next question i'd like to ask miss angela uh, and the question is this you know a lot of times when you think about aviation you normally think about captain doc taylor he looks great in his uniform and is coming during that airplane. And that's who the passengers see as the person who's making all the decisions. Now, we all know sitting here that there's quite a group of people behind the scene who work tirelessly to make things happen. Tell us a little bit more about your role at Delta uh, once again and tell us a little bit more about the different uh, opportunities at Delta. Uh, for instance, that an aspiring professional uh, or an aspiring aviation professional might uh, lean into a little bit more as they start their career uh, pursuing uh, this career in aviation? Absolutely. So first about my role. So my role was created about a year ago. Um, Delta has had a focus on diversity for some time, but we really wanted to create more of a targeted strategy around the career pathways that we want to present out into the market to broaden our reach. Mm -hmm. And so um, as we're doing that, we do want to go beyond just the, those operational roles and showcasing and demystifying the career pathways in some of our corporate roles and some of our commercial roles and other behind the scenes support roles within the operation. In addition, we actually also have a pretty big focus around our leadership representation. And so in addition to just reaching younger uh, generations or college students and showcasing our career pathways in that forum, we're actually wanting to reach experienced professionals to showcase pathways and you know our IT space, our analytics space. So much of the airline is run by you know all of the analytics data that we require. Um, we also you know obviously you know we have a lot of the same corporate functions as a lot of other companies: marketing, finance, supply chain. And so my role is to look at ways that we can reach targeted talent pools with those skill sets and really showcase our career pathways so that they can see, you know, ways that they can enter Delta, ways that they can grow at Delta over time and become future leaders. That's also a great way to get an HR number for if you do want to be on the flight deck one day. 
does it does it correlate like that? Like if you have an HR number, um, like in a position like you have, and then you transition to becoming a pilot, would your seniority stay the same? So when you're hired at Delta, you keep that seniority date mm-hmm. for like past benefits and like health benefits and such. Mm-hmm. But once you become a pilot, you start kind of at the bottom of the seniority list, oh. but you retain your um, your original hire date for like um, standby travel okay. and stuff like that. Oh, so okay, learn right. something new every day. Right. Yes. Thank you, Doug. So yes, I was thinking like, ah, oh, you probably would keep your seniority date, but mm. I know that pilot <laughs> benefits are very different, or somewhat different, I should say. And mm-hmm. so yeah, thanks for that clarification. Yes. Yes. Very well. Now, we also do know that there's a, uh, a shortage in the aviation industry for all sorts of professionals. Can you tell us a few of the things that you are doing uh, at Delta to help mitigate uh, and, and plan ahead, rather, for the future? Absolutely. So we definitely have our eye on that shortage. So we are studying all the reports. The Boeing report is one that we reference quite often, which, mm-hmm. you know, talks about the shortage between about 2032 up to around 2040. There being a significant shortage of pilots mechanics, as well as flight crew. Um, And so that is an area where we are doing, you know, we're making investments in in new and different outreach initiatives. You know, we're wanting to do uh, more in that K through 12 arena to plant seeds. I was talking with Doug earlier about the importance of really planting planting a a dream in the hearts of young people Mm -hmm. that will help them to see themselves in the aviation industry. So some may be pilots, some may be mechanics, and certainly, again, the range of other career pathways that we have um, at Delta are things that we really want to showcase, and and we're focusing a lot on how we tell the stories. Um, And so with that, we we are, you know, partnering with a range of different uh, organizations to get out in the community and broaden our reach because we know that we've got to start early We've got to be very intentional. We've got to go beyond just high level exposure and really kind of creating more immersive experiences mm-hmm. so that these, you know, young people, next generation aviators or, you know, other crew members or, you know, business professionals mm-hmm. can really start to understand what the aviation industry is about and also what Delta is about, right? We have a special and unique culture that we want to convey and make sure that we are attracting the people that are attracted to our, our you know, business model to us. Yes, well. for sure. A couple of weeks ago when I was in the office, I couldn't be a part of it because I had actual work to do, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the Ace Academy came to Delta, which I thought was amazing. I think they stayed for the whole week and they did a bunch of things like on the simulator and um, stuff like that for me. Finding out I wanted to be a pilot at 17 and I didn't know before that that it was even a possibility or like more than like a childhood dream. So I think that's so important to like start young so people can see like, oh, yeah, you look like me. Like I can do that. Yes, Delta. Oh, you go. Please. Yeah. Well, that's super important, too, because what happens is we need to do more of a better job in printing upon people mm-hmm. and, and also representation as well. Mm-hmm. I know for myself, um, I never saw an African-American pilot mm-hmm. ever until I was in college and I was like, what, <laughs> what's your name, who are you? Um, so it's it's really incumbent upon us to go out and do outreach mm-hmm. and to, and the earlier the better, mm-hmm. uh, because you're imprinting people along the pathways. Yeah. Uh, my journey in aviation didn't start as wanting to be a pilot, I wanted to be an astronaut. But uh. part of that was to become a pilot, to you know get flying skills, yeah. become an astronaut back in those days when we had a more robust program. Um, it, and so for me, that path to become an astronaut started when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I was watching, you know, the, the, the other moon landings and watching the space shuttle and, and watching rockets go up and, and, and seeing that, you know, all the sci-fi movies. And it was, to me, it was, as a kid, I was like, this is what I'm going to do when I grow up. I'm going to start flying airplanes. Now I can do this now in high school. Um, so the earlier we catch people um, and the younger, um, we have a better chance of, they're making better life decisions too. Because when I was a kid, I was going, huh, here's t- two choices. If I do this, I'll get in trouble. I can't do this. So I'll make different decisions to stay out of trouble and to stay in school and to do things that were conducive to having good grades and, and getting through college mm-hmm. and such. Mm-hmm. And so as, as a brand ambassador for Delta, one of my jobs is to get out there and talk about, you know, not only Delta's product, but also Delta's culture. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and also aviation in general. Mm-hmm. Because I see a lot of kids that have no idea, like you said earlier, that 
I didn't know I could do this. Mm-hmm. Well, f- if I can do this, you can do this. Yes, for sure. Right? Yeah. Um, but they don't know the different ways to get it done. Mm-hmm. And so one thing we've done is we have a thing called Propel. And um, there's, there's different ways in the Propel. Uh, mm-hmm. There's one way through the community, OBAP, Women in Aviation, um, other outreach organizations. Also, there's uh, we have links with colleges. Mm-hmm. Like the like collegiate path. Yep. Yeah, collegi- yeah. yeah. And also, um, we have uh, with a uh, successful one too, which is within the company, because people see pilots every day at, at Delta. It makes mm-hmm. sense, right? You see a pilot. So many people um, have started at Delta not having an interest in aviation at all that kept seeing things and seeing the, the lifestyle and seeing what, the work we do that are benefiting from our, our company pathway as well. Um, I work in pilot selection as well, and some of our most successful candidates were actually flight attendants. Mm. And mechanics, because they know customer service, they know about um, uh, the the processes behind getting a plane off the j- off the gate, you know. So when they come talk to us, all those things we're looking for are built right in. Mm-hmm. And so why not capture you know that source of, of candidates than the company themselves? So just to add to that really quickly, that is such, I love that story. And I love the part about our employees and how they've really latched onto the career pathways. Mm-hmm. Um, so I recently, I did attend the ACE Academy graduation yeah. recently, and there were a couple that were from the ramp. So there mm-hmm. we had a couple of pilots that had been on the ramp, and one of the pilots shared a story of how he had this, he's in Mexico, and they had a new ramp agent in Mexico that didn't know how to start the plane, mm-hmm. and he had to get out and help start the plane. And it's just amazing that that experience that you can have in you know, the context of one part of the operation mm-hmm. that doesn't leave you, it stays with you. And so it was just, I love that story that really stuck with me. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that's why it is important to have things like this internship so that you are able to get that insight. Cause like, you know, if you want to be in the industry, it's important for you to know like the, the back end of things. Cause it gives you perspective and like, like that guy who was on the ramp, if you understand uh, different facets, it is able to like work towards your good. Um, I would like to just know, wh- starting with you, like what representation means to you and how is it being a black female leader um, in a new role that just started a year ago? Um, so so in, in my role, um, you know, this is not my first leadership role. Oh, so okay. I, I, I feel fortunate to be the first person in this role in particular because I felt that it was important to really approach it. Um, in a way that we could sustain this work over time, right? Mm -hmm. So Doug and I just had a conversation recently where we were talking about the importance of just kind of making things sort of, uh, you know, setting up systems and processes for some of our outreach strategy in a way that we know that, you know, it won't die with the person, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it's really was important as I saw this work and the where Delta wanted to take it for me to step in and create an ecosystem that allows us to be a shared responsibility across our entire enterprise. Mm -hmm. So it's not just me doing this work, right? Mm -hmm. I have a whole team around me Mm -hmm. um, across HR and then within Mm -hmm. the business unit. So Mm -hmm. we're very much lockstep and a broader vision that we call Close the Gap, which is all about how, again, how do we look at, you know, our, you know, the representation that we have within our organization as a whole, Mm -hmm. especially in our scale population, and bring that same representation into our manager level as well as our executive level. So mm-hmm. that is a part, a big part of you know what Look we're focused on. Look at you equipping on. everybody for the battle. Well, listen, <laughs> and so and, it, and it, it, it is a battle, but it is again culturally. I think that you know Delta is on a journey. We've made a commitment from our CEO on down, and so our leaders are really holding hands in this work, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to say that everybody's all on board every day, all the time, mm-hmm. but we are doing a lot to invest in 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 training and and helping to bring a, about an understanding of how this type of uh, this diversity outreach initiatives that we do, uh, bringing the world, seeing talent and brilliance in everyone really positions Delta for the future, right? Mm -hmm. So as we think about the landscape of talent and talent being everywhere, um, we we can't miss out on talent because of our own natural biases and preferences Mm -hmm. um, or what, you know, may have looked good five, 10, 15 years Mm -hmm. ago, right? We've got to understand where, you know, people are today, how to identify Mm -hmm. skill sets across the board with folks with degrees, without degrees, Mm -hmm. and really give them a a pathway into Delta. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's a big part of, you know, I think what's been helpful for me is that shared 
responsibility, uh, responsibility across mm -hmm. the entire business. Yeah. So again, there are times where, you know, we're not always seeing eye to eye, you know, mm -hmm. not every leader's on board. We certainly have to bring people along, but we are very focused on meeting people where they are mm -hmm. and helping them to understand both, you know, the business case of why diversity is important, as well as, you know, there, there's a hearts and minds elements of this too, right? It's about doing good and who, what kind of company does Delta aspire to be now and in the future? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that. How about you? What does representation mean to you? Everything. Um, I, th I think when people can see themselves in certain jobs where they never thought they'd be, mm -hmm. um, it, it changes lives. Um, and, and even after 26 years at Delta, I still see that to this 20, day. You said 26? 26, yeah. Wow. 26, yeah, I've been yes. here a while. <laughs> now, that's why you got the, three, the 350. <laughs> right, yep, pretty much. Um, and and kind of a personal story, um, I got back from Seoul, Korea one day. It was like last week, actually. And I'm, I'm at Subway in the, in, the, in the A concourse, and a flight attendant walks up and goes like, and just stares like, are you are you a captain? And I'm like, yeah. Why? I've never seen like, we're speaking in code like like one of us. Yeah. She was a new hire, and I'm like, well, we're out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and she shared a story about getting into the Propel program and wanted to be a pilot, but but never seeing because she wasn't in with Delta for that long, mm -hmm. and so she didn't have the exposure to other people that were in aviation. Mm -hmm. And so I was like her first African American pilot she's seen, and it was like. That was pretty impactful for me because I, I, I tend to forget that, you know, we're still in the trailblazing phase of, of mm -hmm. aviation. Yeah. It's not the norm. It's not the norm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us have forgotten that, I think. Mm -hmm. And and even I do occasionally I, mm -hmm. I kind of forget. Mm -hmm. But I need but it to me I, I need to remember Grounding. that right. Yeah, that you know, you you're still trailblazing. We're in that phase still. And so I, I want us to work towards that day when this is completely normal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to like, oh my God, look at that! Mm -hmm. But um, a unicorn, right, right, <laughs> right. But but for right now, we're we're still in that phase right now, mm -hmm. um, and so representation to me super matters, mm -hmm. especially because everyone's unique life experience. You solve problems differently, mm -hmm. right? And so when you have an issue on the flight deck, and you have people from across the diaspora of 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 backgrounds. You can solve problems super easy. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if you're on a two-man aircraft and you have a problem, there's two of you, and so you, you solve the problems that way. But when I'm on a four-person aircraft, I can bring in the other flight crew from the bunk and go, we have a situation. Yep. And now you have four minds working on one problem. Mm -hmm. and, and so that just means, is, is less diversity good or is more diversity good? More diversity is better because I use that every day. I get all the people involved, I get dispatch. I get maintenance, I get uh, meteorology, the other flight crew, maybe a mentor from on the ground. I still talk to my buddies from 20, 30 years ago and go, I have a conundrum, what do I do? Um, and so the more voices you hear make better, stronger, more rational decisions. Absolutely. And diversity is like baked right into that. Yeah. Understanding that we need to bridge that gap uh, in allowing more people to see a representation of themselves uh, in the flight deck or behind the scenes at Delta. What are some specific steps or practical uh, uh, steps that someone could follow in order to get themselves in a position where they are ready for a position at Delta? I would say if you have an interest to work for Delta or even in aviation in general, I tell people that, you know, go to where people are. Go to the airport. Talk to gate agents. Talk to baggage handlers, talk to anybody that has that uniform on to get their perspective on and what they see in the business. Um, and, and you have a, a different, you have a more robust set of perspectives. Mm -hmm. And the more, the more robust that is, the better decisions you can make about your own future. Mm -hmm. You might say, look at the guy in the uniform, I wanna do that, but you might wanna go into analytics. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, or you yeah. might wanna go into legal or, or corporate real estate. And so, and so this could be the pathway to people getting into aviation but they might have other more profound wants and desires to do something else too. Yeah. But I, I, I don't mind talking to kids. I don't mind talking to adults. Mm -hmm. I don't mind talking to anybody. You, you like airplanes? We'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think more of us need to do that, I mm -hmm. think. And I think more of us need to- Coffee chats, that's yeah. what we call it. <laughs> sure, coffee chats, anything. I'll talk to janitors. 
Yeah. <laughs> you like yeah. planes? We'll talk. It's cool. Yeah. Because I don't know who he's talking to later. Yeah. Or I don't know who um, the person at Chick-fil-A in the A concourse is talking to later. They might go, I met a pilot. Do you have his card? Yeah, it's here. I want to become a pilot. You know, or you, you never know where they're from. Mm -hmm. You never know what their ambitions are. Mm -hmm. But just to yeah. be there for people to reach out and talk to you. Yeah, yes, for sure. With the new um, Propel um, pathway, they kind of changed the structure of their um, system. Now you have you can't have more than a private pilot, and you need a hundred hours or something of that sort. Are you familiar? Relatively, I'm not the pro on that. I can answer some mm -hmm. basic questions on that though. But, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I was I was just going to say that people who are interested in Propel but are on that advanced track mm -hmm. that Propel wouldn't be the only like you know the only option. right yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah we're still hiring robustly off the street mm -hmm. and so if you're already along your pathway in, in aviation like your commercial and your instrument and such um you wouldn't specifically need propel mm -hmm. um but parts of propel might benefit you for example getting hired by endeavor mm. um and then that's one pathway as well you do a couple of years there i believe you have uh certain career opportunities mm -hmm. after that but um, you don't you don't need to do that specifically, but it's it's an option, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So when it comes to jobs like you know chief pilot officer, mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought about you know taking off your hat for a couple hours a day? Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I've I've considered that. I have a very full. I mean, working, you know, well. With, with Delta, I've been, you know, a, a captain, mm -hmm. which I'm doing right now. I've worked in flight standards. Oh, wow. Okay. And I've done uh, uh, line check pilot, which is I, I train new pilots or oh, transitioning pilots yes. and such. Mm -hmm. And also working pilot development, so pilot mm -hmm. interviews and recruiting and such. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really do better at that. Mm -hmm. I, I love teaching. Yes. I love doing outreach. I love yeah. talking to people. I love things like this. This is great. Um, but that's more of an office job where mm. I'd be doing less outreach mm -hmm. and I'd really be doing more in reach in terms yeah. of managing people. So yeah. I, I like being more external. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes what you're good at and what you're passionate about are kind of like parallel. Yeah. And you have to like pick one. Right. So that's cool to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the good thing with Delta is too, and, and I've said this before in other venues, is that when you hire as a pilot, okay, you can fly airplanes, right? But they have a unique way of, seeing like your your hidden talents because mm -hmm. i was never a public speaker mm -hmm. ever kind of shy actually if you could believe that but they saw things in me that i didn't see myself mm -hmm. and next thing you know i'm in japan with a box full of plastic wings at a big convention full of ten thousand people all speaking japanese mm -hmm. so i mean i you know you you find yourself situations where they go you do really really well there i think you're crazy mm -hmm. but i'll try it mm -hmm. and I realized that I, I did enjoy that and that I had this strange bond with that culture where I started learning Japanese and mm -hmm. and they, they'd come to see me and I'm speaking more and more of the language and such but I didn't know I had that mm -hmm. attribute until Delta says hey take these go there yeah what better it's, way to learn how to swim than to get thrown in the ocean right yep exactly <laughs> yeah, so that's sure. that's my own thing and so I don't think so I, I really think um Using those experiences, it, it means the company believes in you, mm -hmm. and and they're and they see uh, your your skill set and things you don't see yourself. And for me, that's very impactful because I I learned more about myself working here than any place else. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been a, a fantastic journey for me. And I'll just add, I mean, that really warms my heart. I just will say that you know, for me, it, being at Delta, I've only been at Delta four years, or be four years in November. I mean, it, from what I see, it's very much a walk the talk culture, and we are very, very invested in our internal, uh, in, in our employees, right? So all the things that we've talked about as it relates to outreach, uh, we are absolutely as invested in bringing out the best in our people, helping them to grow and stretch and try new things. And so as we think about our, you know, the 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 outreach that we have, we are reaching within as much as we are reaching out to ensure that our internal employees have those access to career pathways through Papel. Um, there's, you know, ways to go back and get your AMT licensing. Um, and then there are lots of different apprenticeships that we've rolled out and other mm. career pathways within Delta. So just want to mention that, you know, what, you know, Doug is sharing in his 26 years is certainly what I've seen in the last few years that I've been with Delta. And it's just a 
a great place if you, you know, have an interest in the aviation industry. And, you know, you start in one place and you try some things and you try some different things. And before you know it, you, you've had a whole career. You know, yeah. Yeah, I could take that too. Mentorship is huge. Yeah. Um, upstream and downstream. And, and what I mean by that is yes. the mentors that I had when I was much younger in my profession, I still have those guys to this day, guys yeah. and girls to this day. And we talk a lot. But then I have people that are, are downstream, people that I knew when they were, you know, getting into aviation that are now, you know, at Delta United or American, wherever they are. And we, different companies, we still talk about stuff because we're looking at a problem or situation in two perspectives or three perspectives. And we share and I learn things. I learn things from people that I, I trained as a line ship captain to people that trained me. And so the the further I've gotten along in my career is I have this a larger network of people that I depend on. Like if I land a plane in, in, in Tokyo, I'll have 25 texts from people looking for perspectives on things, tell me stories about what how impact how things impacted their day and such. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool because um, you you never quite know when you need that help you're giving to people. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a personal story here too. I'm sorry I talk a lot sometimes. But you, you get out what you put in and mm -hmm. it multiplies. And this what I mean by that, there was, I was doing a job fair probably eight years ago. Lower time candidate, uh, had the heart of gold, and thought he had no chance in the world of Delta. And I says, well, here's, here's some good news. You know, this is where your numbers are. This is where your, your, your pathway is. Um, you have a better chance than you realize, but make sure your application is, is clean, make sure it looks good, and we'll see where we go. I couldn't tell him yes or no, it's not my job. My job's to kind of like get things filed away. Um, turns out he got the job, which is cool, great guy. I'm having one of those days where my co-pilot, negative person, um, had some stuff going on. They wasn't disclosing, but you know I can only do so much psychology. Uh, and it was just, he was bringing my day down. And I was like, I need to kind of keep my head up because I can't invest in, if he's not being forthcoming about what's in his world, I can't invest in that negativity because mm. my job is to be a captain for hundreds of people, not mm. just my co-pilot. Yep. And I'm in the, the van, we're in Seattle, and it was a rainy day, and I'm just like, okay, just, just, just one more day, I get to go home, and there's another crew in the van, and this pilot turns around and goes, Doug Taylor, and I'm like, didn't I talk to you at a job fair about three years ago? He's like, yeah, oh my God, I got the job, and I'm on the 7 <laughs> 6 I'm flying my mom to Paris today. Wow. And without you talking to me that day, I'd never be here or fly my mom to Paris. Wow. Thank you so much. Okay. And that the good karma I threw out there three years previous came back to help me the day I needed the most. Wow. And so these things happen wow. all the time. Yeah. But wow. you got to get it out there first. You got to help people. Exactly. And, and to echo what you say there, um, it's very important to find good mentors. But for those of you who are watching, remember, while you are looking at someone or looking up to someone, uh, you too can be a mentor to someone else. Because I remember when I was, uh, you know, in my CFI days uh, as an instructor, uh, I was looking up to my friends who were at United, Delta, et cetera, all those big airlines. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, nowadays, uh, just a few years later, here I am, I'm sitting in the captain's seat, and now I have to not only be a captain to the passengers, but be a mentor to the new hires who are hiring at the company every day. Right. And uh, the experience for me as a, uh, someone who's, who, learned, who started learning to give back uh, started way before I even had all those accolades and it started right when I was looking up to my buddies at those major airlines back in the days uh, and realizing that I actually have a little bit more to share with my friends who are coming up working on airshipment uh, ratings or mm -hmm. uh, commercial single etc and giving them the chance and the time of day to uh, help them along in their careers yeah. Yeah. and it never stops exactly <laughs> never stops yeah I'm 26 years in a Delta and I still talk to people that are from private to retired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I sent my, my mentor um, from 30 years ago a text this morning to say, hey, are you in town? Because he was uh, Captain Aaron Gold from OVAP. Mm. And I'm like, hey, if you're in town, let's hook up and talk about stuff and see what's going on. Yeah. But I, you, you the, the, the longer I go in this profession, I have a deeper pool of mentees and mentors. Mm -hmm. and, and I intend to keep that and grow it after I retire even. 
Yeah. Exactly. So with you guys all being in leadership, people will think you get to a level and, you know, you made it. So how do you guys continue to develop yourselves? Like, you know, those those soft skills. You know, so as I think about my own development, there are, um, I think about the skill sets that I have in terms of, you know, presentation skills and mm -hmm. things of that nature. I also think about the behaviors, you know, what, how am I as a leader to my team and those around me? Um, so, you know, one, I, I love the point about mentoring. I, I'm a huge fan of peer mentoring, right? So getting feedback from those around you uh, in real time, sometimes how'd that meeting go? What'd you think about this? Can I run this by you before I go into a meeting, oh, right? Wow. So even so, as a leader, you reach out to people who are- Absolutely, 100%. Wow. Peers, I think Doug hit on a bit on reverse mentoring, which is the term where people that are you know more junior in their career are giving you feedback and ideas as well. I think that's very important. And of course, from senior, senior level leaders as well. Another thing that I like to do is I try to learn from other contexts. So like I will listen to a, a business call or an investor call and think about how my role in talent acquisition might be related to our loyalty initiatives or our marketing initiatives. So, you know, we're not quite the same as sort of the HR strategy and the talent strategy, but conceptually there are some, some, some commonalities there. And so as I learn about other areas of the business, I think about how do I bring that in as well as how I serve the business uh, through, through the lens of not just what I need to accomplish, but what they're trying to accomplish. But I do that by really studying, you know, I listen to the investor calls I listen to the various podcasts and so that's a ways that I sort of you know take time to invest in, in developing myself that's amazing and in my own personal journey I'm, I'm not done yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you mentioned having made it um, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up still to this day mm -hmm. and so that still drives me I still uh, uniquely when I if I do get bored for whatever I'm doing, there's always some other challenges, and so I always change it up with something, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so externally, you could say, oh, he's made it, 350 captain, you know, with some seniority. Uh, but internally, I still, things, I still see things daily that I want to do, mm -hmm. things that still interest me, or um, uh, there's opportunities to do other things than just fly airplanes. Um, I, I know personality-wise, I'm, I'm better as a shark. So the more I swim, you kind of mm. swim to breathe. Yeah. And so I kind of move to live to breathe somewhat. Yeah. And so I'm always doing something other than just flying airplanes along the path, mm -hmm. um, which means I, I might work a lot probably. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but for me, it, it, um, it's a lifestyle. It, it's it? a lifestyle and, it, and, it, and it, it, it's, it's, it's soothing for me to, to look at other skill sets. Like I love to learn languages, and so by virtue of me being an international captain, I get to learn them and intersperse the, in the cultures and such. Um, there's something to learn every day. Yeah, definitely. So as we get close to the end of our time together here on the panel, uh, I'll start with you, Angela, first. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's looking at starting a career at Delta? People start careers at Delta in different places in their own journeys, right? So, you know, we have a lot out online to now showcase the career pathways at Delta. So uh, that's a good place to learn about, you know, what we have to offer. We're also, there's a lot out on LinkedIn, right? Social media has its place and its purpose. We are sharing a lot about the, the, the you know, ways that you can join Delta, what the light, day in the life types of experiences of our employees. Um, and so there are just a number of different career paths. Um, there's a number of different ways you can find out about the career paths at Delta just by going online, either our website, uh, deltacareers.com or delta.com, um, and as well as, again, social media. And then, you know, we're, I love the point that Doug made earlier, talking to our people, talking to our employees. I think you learn a lot about what, you, what might work for you, what might not work for you. But again, we have such a range of career opportunities within our business. I guarantee you, if you talk to Doug or, or myself or someone, you <laughs> might find something that would be of interest. So definitely just kind of don't be afraid to start a conversation with someone just in your space as you're traveling through the airport or um, as you might see us at the OBAP conference or elsewhere. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I, I say talk to everyone, everyone you see. Um, everyone has something to share, the other in paths. And the more people you talk to, you might have that special person that says, hey, by the way, here's my card. 
call me Monday morning or, and let's talk about getting you in the simulator. Let's, let's talk about getting you in the office and see maybe corporate compliance or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say largely, of course, social media because we're pretty active on social media. It lets people know what the, the latest events are, maybe an open house one day, or maybe an event at the TOC or on campus or, or the Delta Museum to look at our history of Delta. Um, anything you can find related to the company you want to work for, just engulf it, mm -hmm. everything. Read everything. Uh, talk to everyone. Um, the, one, the worst thing you possibly do, I think, professionally, is to want to do something but do nothing about it. Love I know so many people that had ambitions that thought it would knock on their door. Yep. It, it's not. So you got to go out there and knock on doors yourself. Mm -hmm. Knock them down if you have to. Oh, or they don't know where to start. Right. And you just have to start somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the door's closed, just break it down. Yeah. I'm just saying. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Exactly. Also, know about the company <laughs> that you're trying to go for. That's important. Yeah. They can ask you a random question and you're like, you did no research. So you want a, a first impression. You only get one shot at that. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing a little bit more uh, about Delta and the different uh, career paths that are out there for anyone who's uh, looking and interested. So now you guys know uh, to follow their uh, page uh, on uh, all the uh, social media platforms and, of course, just ask questions. So start by seeing someone at the airport and stopping them on their track and ask them a question about what it is that you'd like to know. Anything you'd like to add before we end? Yeah, no. Yes, thank you guys for coming. Uh, I can't wait to guys see you guys around the office. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Yes, thanks for hanging with us.